I'll bet you've heard of the lost civilization of Atlantis sinking into the waters off the coast of ancient Greece. The story is supposed to be a myth, but have scientists finally found the lost city? Eh, not sure about that, but they did find a lost continent. Wait just one minute! I've lost socks, keys, and even a few marbles. But how careless do you have to be to misplace an entire continent? We'll have to ask our planet about that one. Earth lost what was called Greater Adria between 100 and 120 million years ago. So, how did that happen, and where did it go? The only way to describe the process would be kind of like a snake slipping through rocks or going down into a hole. It's easier to imagine losing a continent when you think about how hard it is to find a snake that's escaped your curious stares. Most snakes don't leave trails. In fact, if you weren't around 100 million years ago to watch that snake slide beneath a boulder, and I wasn't, you'd never know it happened. Just like scientists might never have found Adria if it weren't for the snakeskin. I mean, the mountains. Let's say your fleeing snake slithers under a rock. It's long past due for a shedding, so its old skin scrapes off and bunches up right there in that tiny space between the boulder and the ground. That's what Greater Adria did. When it broke off from a humongous landmass known as Gondwana, stick around for more on that here in a few, the Greenland-sized chunk headed north. When it eventually crashed into Europe, it slipped under and caused the meeting place of the two continents to fold and scrunch up. For years and years, it just kept going, and those folds kept growing. In the end, it left behind very obvious and famous traces. You might even have gone skiing on them during a winter vacation. I'm talking about the Apennines and the Swiss Alps. Professor Dowie van Hinsbergen, the geologist who led the research team responsible for this colossal discovery in September 2019, has his own analogy. He compares this folding action to what happens when you stick your arm into a small space and your shirt sleeve can't fit through. It bunches up, and those bunches are like the mountain range. You might be wondering if other mountain ranges have similar origins. They do. Ever push sand together with your hands? Your hands work like shifting land masses, and those peaks of sand you created are a mini version of the Rockies. The snakeskin, your shirt sleeve, the sand… The point here is that mountains get left behind when massive chunks of land smash into and slip under each other. But what about the disappearing continent that leaves them? What happened to Greater Adria itself? Just as a snake burrows underground for the winter, Adria kept sliding beneath the surface. Dr. Van Hinsbergen thinks she's probably nice and cozy about 900 miles under southern Europe right now. But wait a minute, is Greater Adria still a continent if she's underwater or under land? Is a snake still a snake when it's underground? Of course it is! In fact, I know a continent that's mostly underwater yet isn't lost at all. Ever heard of Zealandia? It's also called the New Zealand continent, or Tasmantis. It looks like an archipelago, which is a string of islands. But if you peek under the water, you'll see that it's really one continuous piece of submerged land with mountaintops poking out over the surface. Those peaks are the islands. Zealandia is categorized as a microcontinent. Which then begs the question. What is a continent anyway? Eh, that's a matter of some debate. In fact, we Earthlings can't even agree on how many continents, not counting the lost and micro ones there are. Generally, a continent is an enormous landmass. If you're from the US, you heard that there are seven of them. Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, also called Oceania, Europe, North America, and South America. European school kids, however, combine Europe and Asia into Eurasia, so they only learn six continents. South Americans also recognize six, but they keep Europe and Asia separate and combine North and South America instead. What's even stranger is that everyone seems to agree that Australia is a continent, while Greenland isn't, and has to make do with the title of world's biggest island. Poor Greenland. This all has something to do with the tectonic plates that lie beneath the continents. But that's a discussion best left for another video. So, where did all these continents come from in the first place? 
Well, if you've ever looked at a globe or a map, you probably noticed that the two great landmasses surrounding the Atlantic Ocean, North and South America on one side, and Europe and Africa on the other, seem like puzzle pieces that could be pushed together to form one even more gigantic mass. You might also know that there's a name for that mass, Pangaea. Scientists think Pangaea, a supercontinent if there ever was one, broke apart 175 million years ago. But not into those two big left and right puzzle pieces we have today. Instead, the split probably ran horizontally, leaving a connected North America, Europe, and Asia on top, a mass called Laurasia, while South America stuck it out with Africa, Antarctica, and Australia in a mass known as Gondwana. Yes, that very one that Greater Adria would break free from later on. So, if you took all of Earth's land masses, continents, microcontinents, islands, and archipelagos and squished them together, would you get the original blob of land known as Pangaea? Nope. Not only would you be missing the parts of continents that lie underwater, like the masses connecting archipelagos, you'd also be missing all the ones lost over time. Oh yeah, there are others besides Adria. Scientists are looking for them, and they've already found some. One of those lost continents is the Rio Grande Rise. It's a stretch of underwater seamounts that's been dubbed Brazil's Atlantis. Greater Adria lay somewhere between North Africa and Southern Eurasia. Hey, that's right around the Mediterranean Sea. And the Mediterranean is where Greece and Athens are. So, Greater Adria must have been Atlantis, right? Hmm, doubtful. Historians think Plato made up the story of Atlantis, but could it have really happened? You might think so if you believe the story of Greek deities punishing the civilization for starting a beef with Athens. But a more scientific theory would propose that Atlantis was simply flooded. Or perhaps it could have been one of the islands scraped off and left behind when Greater Adria dove under Europe. Disappointing as it is to say, the one thing we can't be sure of is that Adria itself wasn't Atlantis. The tectonic forces that shoved the continent under Europe did so over 100 million years ago. That's about 80 million years before any human showed up on our planet to start a conflict with Athens or anyone else. If you look at all the world's continents like broken puzzle pieces that formed a shattered Pangaea, you could say that Dr. Van Hinsbergen and his team have spent the last 10 years trying to put that puzzle back together. And like actual puzzles, it's hard to do that when you're missing a bunch of pieces. I'm looking at you, Adria! But they have fancy geological equipment that tracks the magnetic record left behind in the rock's minerals. You see, every rock, stone, and mountain has a sort of imprint of the time and place it was created. It all has to do with the Earth's magnetic poles. They change every now and then in a process called geomagnetic reversal. So, in a nutshell, the specific magnetism of certain sediment and minerals works like a map and calendar. And that's how they know where Adria came from, where she ended up, and who she met along the way. By studying the magnetism of these samples, the team also found out another interesting detail. Greater Adria not only crashed into Europe, but she was also spinning on the way there. Ha! Ah, a twirling, dancing mass of land whose carefree trip northward would be cut short by an unexpected roadblock known as Europe. Hey, that would make for a great bedtime fairy tale for the kids. Now, my only remaining question is, if Greater Adria dove beneath Europe, could she rise again? It is possible. Continents keep shifting and they remain on the move today. But they tend to go at a snail's pace. So check back in another 100 million years, and we'll see how many continents second graders are learning about in the future. I won't be here though, I'll probably retire. <laughs>